السلام علیکم دس لیکچر از ریگارڈنگ گاؤٹ اینڈ کرسٹن آرتھراپتھیز سو وین بی ایز یو نو دیٹ وی آر کنٹینیوئنگ ود آر لیکچرس آن ریمٹالوجی وی نیڈ ٹو let's go to the next slide and um, let's discuss um these cases so uh, we'll be discussing the answers in our Uh, lectures. This is a six case of a 67 year old lady who presents with bilateral knee joint pain for a few months. Another case is of a 54 year old but observing lady presenting with history of generalized body aches and tiredness for five to six months. And when you see her, she has got a waddling gait and proximal muscle weakness. A 65 year old lady, another case, a 65 year old lady presented with inability to walk for one day, which is associated with severe pain and limitation of movement of right hip joint, and she's unable to, unable to bear weight on the right leg. Another case is that a 45 year old lady who presented with pain and swelling of her hands and feet for two months, she finds it very difficult to get up in the morning. <laughs> We are now going to talk about crystal arthropathies and the most common of the prototype of crystal arthropathies is gout, which is because of uh, deposition of monosodium urate monohydrates in usually the neutrophils of the joints. And uh, pseudogout, which is the second most common Uh, crystal arthropathy, which is because of calcium phytophosphate dihydrate crystals. Then there is uh, crystal arthropathy or arthritis because of hydroxyapatite basic phos calcium phosphate crystals. And then ox calcium oxalate crystals can also lead to arthritis in some cases. Khate pite lo, gosht khate pite lo, logo ki disease hai gout. The objectives of this lecture are that the students will be able to define and classify crystal arthropathy. They will demonstrate their knowledge about the epidemiology, the pathophysiology. They will be able to enlist the clinical features, justify the investigations, summarize the management, and eliminate the complications of crystal arthropathies. And the first one of them, the most common, Of them is gout. Gout is defined as a peripheral arthritis resulting from deposition of sodium urate crystals in one or more joints and is associated with hyperuricemia. So please remember peripheral arthritis association with sodium urate crystals and hyperuricemia. So think about this case a 56 year old obese. hypertensive man presented with history of pain and swelling of the right forefoot for two days. He has excruciating pain and is wearing flip-flops as he is unable to wear socks and shoes. And he also has got a fever for one day. So when you encounter a patient like this, you need to do examination of the patient. And you find that the patient has got an inflamed um, right matter tarsocalangeal joint and you think that the patient has got gout. So gout is because of uric acid imbalance and hyperuricemia leading to uh, formation of monosodium urate crystals which get deposited mostly in the joints but sometimes in the skin. lead to development of a peripheral arthritis. 
This can be because of a disruption in the uric acid balance. So urate levels, if they are increased, can lead to urate supersaturation and crystallization, which is going to lead to gout. But why would they increase? Either there is increased dietary purines or increased endogenous purine synthesis or there is reduced renal excretion of urate. Uh, so diet ka iske in the role hai ya phir body mein breakdown zyada ho raha hai kyunki purine metabolism ka end product hai uric acid aur purines are found in the nuclei so agar nucleus ke destruction bahut zyada ho rahi hai ya phir you are taking a high purine intake of diet then there is going to be high urate levels ya phir renal issues and this is a CKD hai, chronic kidney disease uske andar bhi urate levels high ho sakte hai. so please remember that if the kidneys cannot excrete uric acid it's going to lead to hyperuricemia this uh, hyperuricemia cascade as depicted in this slide shows that overproduction or dietary proteins or tissue nucleic acid because of endogenous purine synthesis and under excretion lead to hyperuricemia. And when these crystallize, they can be either silent tissue deposition or they can be gout or they can be renal manifestations with either stone formation or nephrogalcinosis. And this also, please remember, hyperuricemia is associated with cardiovascular event and cardiovascular mortality. So gout encompasses a group of disorders that occur alone or in combination. And they include hyperuricemia, attacks of acute, typically monoarticular inflammatory arthritis, proficious deposition of urate crystals in or around the joints or in renal parenchyma <clears throat> and urolithiasis. It affects men more commonly than women and affects less than 0.5% of the population. It occurs daily in young adults, except with specific enzyme defects. <clears throat> and it is because if there's an enzyme defect, there uh, may be a high incidence with 80% in families affected by this disorder. <clears throat> it's rare in premenopausal women and in, it's common in certain ethnic groups, certain um, Native American groups and certain Jewish uh, uh, race. The causes of hyperuricemia, as we have uh, already discussed, can be impaired excretion because of chronic kidney disease, drug therapy, hypertension, lead toxicity, primary hyperparathyroidism, uh, hypothyroidism, G6 PD deficiency, increased production because of increased purine synthesis as in Lechner syndrome or increased turnover of purines as in myeloproliferative and lymphoproliferative disorders or other issue, uh, conditions like psoriasis. Urate saturates in plasma at 7 milligrams per deciliter assuming that the pH, temperature and sodium are within normal limits. And more sodium urate crystals deposit in less vascular tissue. So the pH comes out, so crystallization bhi hoti hai, or deposition bhi hoti hai. So usually in cartilage, there is uh, the cartilage is a less vascular tissue and also tendon and ligaments. So there is monosodium urate crystal deposition in these tissues. There is predilection for peripheral joints and tissues, and osteoarthritic joints are more prone. When we talk about the pathophysiology of gout, the attack starts because of crystal formation, because of supersaturation, because of hyperuricemia. We because of the use So hyperuricemia, if it happens, supersaturation can happen, which in certain conditions will lead to crystallization of monosodium urate crystals. When this foreign body is anywhere, so the white blood cells are going to recognize this as a foreign body and they are going to attack these crystals. And they are going to engulf and ingest them. 
but the crystals will lead to popping of the cell. The cell is going to release its lysosomes and the proteins and these proteins in the lysosomes will call in more blood cell and set up a cascade of inflammation. These proteins and the increased number of WBCs will lower the pH, making it possible for, a more, for more crystals to form. And thus, a spiral of gout, gouty attack is going to be precipitated, which is going to be um, usually occurring in the fourth to six decades for men. In women, usually it's postmenopausal. And classically, it's a monoarticular uh, inflammation, podagra, which is the first metatarsophalangeal joint inflammation. So usually, this is affected more than ankles, and more ankles are affected more than the upper extremities. The precipitants may be purely in rich food. This is davat ve gaye. Agle din subah uthe to ek. और वहां पे बहुत रिच फूड खाया रेड मीट खाया बहुत सारा या अल्कोहल इनटेक था और इवन ट्रॉमा एंड सर्जरी कैन प्रेसिपिटेट एन एक्यूट गाउटी आर्थराइटिक अटैक ड्रग्स व्हिच इंक्रीज यूरिक एसिड लेवल्स और रिड्यूस यूरिनरी एक्सक्रीशन ऑफ यूरिक एसिड कैन लीड टू दिस डिजीज even some drugs which if you use in acute attacks uh, which lower uric acid levels can cause uh, onset of a chronic gouty arthritis and serious illnesses such as MI and stroke will lead to precipitation of the crystals and an onset of acute gouty arthritis. The acute attack occurs usually over hours and is frequently nocturnal. कोई रात में ओवर इंडल्ज किया और सुबह में उठे तो एक जॉइंट बहुत ज्यादा इन्फ्लेम था विद एक्सक्रूशिएटिंग पेन स्वेलिंग रेडनेस एंड टेंडरनेस व्हिच आर द हॉलमार्क्स ऑफ इन्फ्लेमेशन एंड द क्लासिक प्रेजेंटेशन एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी मेंशन इज द फर्स्ट मेटाटार्सोफेलेंजियल जॉइंट बट मे अफेक्ट द एंकल्स नीज दिस एल्बो बट रेयरली सेंट्रल जॉइंट्स लाइक द सेक्रोइलियक और द हिप जॉइंट्स इन क्रोनिक आर्थराइटिस it is uh, there is deposition of tophi which lead to destruction and it usually occurs if acute gouty arthritis is left untreated so the crystals lead to bone erosions and uh, collection of crystals lead to formation of a uh, uh, substance leading to formation of a tophus and this can affect the synovium and cause synovitis. This can also deposit around the fingers and in the pinna of the ear. So this is can occur with chronic tophaceous gout. These tophi may ulcerate the overlying skin and the crystals may ooze out through the skin as you can see in this picture. And these are needle-like crystals. This is a tophus at the elbow. These are tophi in the bulb of the fingers. So chronic tophaceous gout. Usually we have said that it's a peripheral monoarthritis. But when chronic goes on, it will multiple joints affect. Karega. When you uh, encounter a patient with gout, you are going to confirm the diagnosis through investigations. The investigations are going to be uh, in CBC, you will see a leukocytosis because there is inflammation and, and inflammatory markers would be high. There would be increased ESR. When you do the biochemistry, serum uric acid usually is going to be high. And you always need to do synovial fluid analysis. Whenever there is a single inflammatory joint which has got arthritis, which is acutely inflamed, we must go for a synovial fluid analysis. And uh, you would see, uh, you need to do it in order to differentiate from septic arthritis. Septic arthritis is a rheumatological emergency.
And when you uh, do analysis of the synovial fluid, it would be an inflammatory fluid, but the specific feature is going to be needle-like intracellular and extracellular crystals, which are biofringent under polarized light microscopy. And this is what they look like. So needle-like crystals, which show different colors when the light is polarized. So this is called negatively, uh, this is called the negatively biofringent crystals. Uh, when you do the radiology, when you do the x-rays, you can see erosions. This tarah of erosion that looks like this tarah of someone has been bite out from the periarticular area. So red bite erosions is so called. Red bite erosions. You can see these uh, in this this picture encircled. So red bite erosions in the X-rays because of the deposition of profile. Uh, septic arthritis has to be excluded when you sus uh, suspect when there is a single inflammatory arthritis. Then uh, uh, pseudo gout, acute rheumatic fever, palindromic rheumatism, and psoriatic arthritis also needs to be excluded. Management includes reduce the inflammation by using NSAID or low-dose colchicine. We may need to do joint aspiration if the upper two drugs are not working or we may need to give systemic or intra-articular steroids. Non-pharmacological measures would include ice packs and rest and lifestyle modification. Avoid alcohol, avoid purine-rich foods, weight reduction, and the pharmacological long-term management is going to be urate lowering drugs or gives drugs which are going to excrete the uric acid. So uric or drugs with increased fluid intake and alkalinization. So the drugs are going to work. Allopurinol is going to work only by blocking formation of uric acid. Uricase is going to work by breaking down the uric acid. Probenicid increases excretion of uric acid. And anacid, colchicine, and corticosteroids are going to reduce inflammation. So different drugs can work at different points in uh, the pathophysiology of gout. Urate lowering drugs are indicated when the patient has got recurrent attacks or a chronic arthropathy has got tophi or uric acid stones. Uh, Non-pharmacological measures, as we already discussed, of the alcohol, weight loss, dietary changes, and change the diuretic. Uh, avoid beer, spirits, fructose, red meat, and seafood. Some of the fish have high purine contents, and seafood like crabs and shrimps have got a high purine content. And so in acute, uh, attacks and acid like naproxen, egg do drugs ke naam zaroor aane chahiye. Naproxen or diclofenac ye naam yaad rakhye. If this doesn't work, then colchicine can be started with uh, 1000 micrograms stats and 500 micrograms after one hour. Uh, stop with response or side effects. Side effects are usually um, gastrointestinal side effects. If these Two are not working, then aspiration followed by the administration of intra-articular steroids or systemic steroids like prednisone. Urate lowering drugs are started two to four weeks after resolution of the acute attack. If you start urate lowering drugs like allopurinol during an acute attack, you can precipitate a chronic gouty arthritis. Um, Prevention of acute flares during maintenance treatment is through colchicine or NSAID for three to six months after starting urate lowering therapy. And flares will be treated without interruption of urate lowering therapy. Diet will decrease the uric acid by one milligram per deciliter at best. So weight loss and modification of the medication will work. Uricosuric drugs and uh, urate lowering drugs can be used. Um, so this is related to gout. In pseudo gout, they 
which is also called chondrocalcinosis. Understand the terms. Chondro is cartilage and calcinosis is calcification. So there would be calcification of cartilage in this condition. And this is because of which crystal deposition? Calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate. Um, the cause is uncertain. ATP degrades to adenosine pyrophosphate and increase excess pyrophosphate. A transport can occur with certain genetic mutations, but increased levels of pyrophosphate will lead to calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate formation and deposition uh, in different tissues where they are phagocytosed and um, by monocytes, macrophages, and neutrophils, and they are going to set up an inflammation. So when this is usually, which is occurring in the joints, is going to lead to onset of inflammation in the joints, arthritis of the joint, and in long term, severe disease can lead to even destruction of the joint. It can be associated with aging and is associated with certain diseases like primary hyperparathyroidism, hemochromatosis, hypophosphatasia, hypomagnesemia, even chronic gout sometimes can lead to uh, pseudogout also, postmenisectomy and gentleman syndrome and with epiphyseal dysplasias. Joints most commonly involved include the larger joints like knee, wrist, shoulder, ankle, elbow. Uh, it's usually polyarticular and may mimic other arthritis. It is when the acute arthritis occurs, there may be association with low-grade fever, and it is precipitated by trauma and rapid reduction in serum calcium levels. Synovial fluid will show an inflammatory uh, fluid with a total leukocyte count from thousands to 100,000. And the crystals in it are going to be rhomboid, square, rod-like crystals, which are weakly biofringent. And they may be inside tissue fragments and uh, neutrophils. The radiology will show chondrocalcinosis. I'll show these uh, pictures in a little while with punctate or linear opacities in the cartilaginous tissue. So this is a picture of the synovial fluid. On one side, you can see the negatively biofringent monosodium butyrate crystals. And on the other side, you get, would see the uh, rhomboid crystals of calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate. These x-rays, if you look at the arrows, you can see that there is calcification in the articular cartilage, which occurs in chondrocalcinosis. So calcification in the articular cartilage occurring in chondrocalcinosis. Another picture for that. If you look inside the joint, inside the ankle joint, you can see a line there, which is because of calcium deposition. So chondrocalcinosis. This is uh, calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate deposition in the Becali's tendon. So management is, uh, if you joint aspiration, if it's a monoarthritis, you always need to do synovial fluid analysis after joint aspiration in order to rule out septic arthritis and confirm your diagnosis. And then give the patient anesthetes, or if the anesthetes are not working, you may need to give intraarticular steroids. If the patient has got a severe disease, usually it's not that severe. But if the patient has got severe disease, then short course steroids may be given. Or uh, you may, uh, if it's a severe, progressive, destructive disease, then interleukin 1 antagonists may be uh, considered in the management of the patient. Prophylaxis can be given through low dose bortizin. And if there's advanced destruction, joint replacement can be. Uh, offered to the patient, especially when it's associated with other diseases like chronic gouty arthritis or osteoarthritis. So um, this is a case of a 75 and elderly lady 
with history of parathyroidectomy for hyperparathyroidism who presented with pain and swelling of multiple joints, both hands, right knee and ankle. She has end stage renal disease and ischemic heart disease. And this was her knee joint X-ray, which shows chondrocalcinosis and the diagnosis of pseudogout was established. <clears throat> Any questions that you have, we can discuss that in the lectures. Thank you.